Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are recording this live session on how to write a paragraph today. Um, my name is Angie Erian. I am a teacher for both social problems and world civilizations. Um, so if you have any questions about me or about what this session is about, just let me know. Um, there will be opportunities for questions built in throughout the session as well. If you have questions, um, feel free to chat them over or you can send me, uh, you know, unmute your computer and speak up. So just let me know if there's anything that you need. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, before we get going, go ahead and sign in using your first name. Uh, when you join, make sure that you hit join audio and then test it out. Um, the more interaction that we have during the sessions, the better. And then after you test your audio, just make sure that you mute yourself so that uh, we can keep out any background noise. That way we don't have to hear, you know, my baby crying in the background, for instance. Um, okay, and again, if you have any questions during the session, I'll try to answer them. If it's something that I don't know the answer to, um, I will take note of it and find the answer and get back to you. So I'll definitely do my best to answer any questions you have. Okay, as far as expectations for our live sessions, um, our, the biggest thing we love for you to do is participate. And, and that can be, you know, giving feedback, asking questions. I am a firm believer that there are no dumb questions. There are anything that is troubling you or, or keeping you from understanding a concept or an assignment or instructions, that anything that's stopping you from being able to move forward in your classes and your courses is something that we wanna address. So if you have any questions at all, let us know. Um, and of course, above all, make sure that you are always respectful to others who are sharing opinions and sharing thoughts. Okay, uh, here's an agenda for what we're gonna go over today. Um, we're gonna break it up. Uh, right now, we are, our first section is gonna be skill learning. So we've broken that up into this beginning section where we're kind of going through the introduction and how to um, basically operate in one of these live sessions. Then we're gonna spend just a few minutes reviewing writing in complete sentences. Now, if this is something that you feel like you struggle with and you want something more in depth than this, maybe even a whole live session dedicated to this, please let me know, because that's something that we can work out. Um, this is just a quick review over you know, what to look for and to make sure that your sentences are complete. But again, if that is something that you wanna focus on more in the future, reach out to me and let me know and we will definitely take care of that. And then we'll spend about 10 minutes talking about how to write a good, complete response paragraph. Um, there's a lot of assignments in world civilizations especially, but really in any history or English class that will ask you for a response paragraph or to post a discussion in paragraph form. Um, these, this is a really important skill. It's something that you're going to use both in these classes, but also just in the rest of your life. It's, it's important to know how to write and to write well and to be able to express your opinions and your thoughts clearly. Um, so if we do have any questions at that point, you're welcome to ask them throughout or you can save them. We will have a question and answer session right after that as well, um, as you can see right here. And then once we finish those questions, we're gonna go ahead and jump to an activity from World Civilization Semester One. Um, at that point, if you are in a different course and you want to leave the session, that's fine. If you do want to stick around and see if that's something, you know, seeing us apply this skill of writing a good complete response paragraph to an actual assignment, you're welcome to stick around for that as well. For those of you that are in World Civilization, World Civilization Semester 1, it would be really good for you to see how we break it down from the very beginning into the different parts of the paragraph that we need. And then one, once more, we'll have a question and answer session right at the very end. So that is kind of what we are going into. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, uh, so this is my, uh, I've got a little bit of a crush on Thor, actually. He is my favorite Avenger. So we're going to talk a little bit about superheroes for our first uh, activity here. I want you guys to read the following sentences, and I want you to think about what is wrong with the following sentences. So we're going to have three columns here. In our first column, we've got an incorrect sentence, and that's where you're going to see the sentence that you're going to read and, and try to figure out what's wrong with it. And then we're going to have a basic rule for writing in complete sentences, and then we will put the correct version of the sentence over here. So I'll go ahead and put the first one up, and then I'll leave it up for you know, maybe 10 seconds or so of silence, and you can try to figure out what it is that's wrong with the sentence. Okay. 
Okay. So this first sentence says, in my opinion, the greatest superhero is Thor because I think he is the strongest. So there's a, there's one rule that's being broken here and it's being broken several times actually throughout this sentence. So I want you to think about it. If you look at this sentence, this thing is a problem right here, right here and right here. So if you said that the issue was capitalization, you are correct. Always, always, always capitalize the first letter of every sentence. So this letter I needs to be capitalized for sure, as long as, as well as all proper nouns. So Thor, because it's a name, should be capitalized as well. The name of a person, a place, or a thing, a specific name that's a proper noun, always should be capitalized. And this is something that I see quite a bit, I think because we live in the world of texting, this I, whenever I is a word on its own by itself, it should always be capitalized. If you're talking about like I, myself, always capitalize that. So those three areas are the biggest ones. So if we go ahead and then and put up our correct version of the sentence, in my opinion, capitalized I, the greatest superhero is Thor, capitalized T, because I, capitalized I again, think he is the strongest. Okay, so that's our first example. So these are some things that I want you to pay attention to as you're writing, just to check yourself and make sure that you're writing in complete sentences. Okay, here's number two. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it up for about 10 seconds again. Tell me what you think is wrong with sentence number two. Okay, so if you haven't figured it out yet, I'll give you a clue. The error is right around here somewhere. So if you can see that this is a run-on sentence, a combination actually of two sentences, you would be correct. So this person that wrote this did not put any, any periods at all. So we have two sentences here and there's not a peri period at the end of the first or the second. So always use periods at the end of each sentence and avoid run-on sentences. So if we were to fix this, some believe that Superman and Hulk are stronger. That is wrong because Thor would defeat them in a battle. You've got two separate thoughts here. So go ahead and divide that thought into two pieces and then you'll have your two separate sentences. So our correct version of that, some believe that Superman and Hulk are the strongest, period. Now, and then as we learned with our rule number one, capitalize the next letter, that is wrong because Thor would defeat them in a battle, okay? And then period at the end of that sentence as well. Even if it's the final sentence, a lot of people forget that period on the final sentence. It's just as important as all the rest. Okay, last one, and then we'll be done with sentences and we can move on to paragraphs. Okay, this one should be pretty obvious. What is wrong with sentence number three? Okay, this one I feel like you don't need quite as much time to review. So this one says, the reason that Superman would lose is because he has but he has what? So one of the biggest rules with writing in complete sentences is making sure that you have a complete thought in your sentence. This is not a complete thought. This was cut off before we had a chance to say what Superman has. So in order to fix this, we need to finish our thought and then put the period at the very end. So the correct version of this sentence, you could go ahead and say, the reason that Superman would lose is because he has a weakness called kryptonite, okay? So this is a complete thought, ends with a period, begins with a capital letter, okay? So these are the, some of the key parts. So again, one more time, let's re review these three rules. Always capitalize the first letter of every sentence and all proper nouns, including the word I, whenever it's standalone by itself. Use periods at the end of each sentence and avoid run-on sentences. And number three, make sure that your sentence holds a complete thought. Hi, it sounds like we've got someone new. Do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and say hi? Hello. Hi. Donna, right? Yes. Hi, Donna. Nice to meet you. I'm Angie. Um, we are just going over complete sentences right now, and we're about to move into writing complete paragraphs. So if at any point you have any questions, just let me know. Um, if you have a question, you can go ahead and speak up. If not, go ahead and put yourself back on mute. That way we can cut out any background noise. And then just let me know if you have anything that you need to address, okay? All right. Okay. Okay, 
So again, those are, I'll review those one more time really quick. Capitalize the first letter of every sentence and all proper nouns, including the word I. Use periods at the end of every sentence and avoid run-on sentences. And then make sure you, your sentence complete or holds a complete thought, okay? All right, going ahead forward into how to write a paragraph. I like to address this section, really, how to make a Big Mac. And I'm a big fan of Big Macs, especially McDonald's. So, uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of McDonald's in general. So if we're looking at a paragraph, I mean looking at a Big Mac, you can see that there's a lot of ingredients to it. So I want you to go ahead and look at the ingredients of a Big Mac, okay? So if we were to go in order from top to bottom, we've got our top bun up here, then we've got our meat and cheese, then we have all the rest of these toppings. We've got lettuce, tomato, pickle, onion, special sauce, of course, and the bottom bun. We actually have a middle bun here too, but we're just gonna ignore that and pretend like it's not actually there. Okay, so these are our ingredients of a Big Mac. So just the same way that you would build a Big Mac, you have to build a paragraph from the top to the bottom, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and compare and show you what those are like. So the top bun and the bottom bun are really the two pieces that hold the Big Mac together, right? They're both the bread, they're the end pieces. Without those two pieces, the entire sandwich would fall apart and would be really difficult to eat. So those are two really, really key pieces to your paragraph. If we compare the top bun to your first sentence of your paragraph, that would be your topic sentence, and your bottom bun is your concluding sentence down here, okay? So um, those two pieces are key to having your paragraph be very clear, make a point, and then have a strong finish, okay? Now between your two buns, you've got the meat and all the toppings, right? So the meat is what I like to call your concrete details or your evidence. Whenever you're writing a paragraph, you always have to give some kind of concrete information or fact to back up your topic sentence. And then your toppings, your other toppings, are your commentary or your explanation. Basically, your explanation of why those details or those facts are significant, why they matter. Okay, so let's break it down, put it all together. In order, your paragraph should look like this. You should have your top bun or your topic sentence very first, then your meat, which is your concrete details or evidence. Now this can be paraphrased. I guess we'll go over this in a second. That can be paraphrased or it can be in a quotation. Um, your other toppings, which would be your commentary or your explanation, and then your bottom bun is gonna be your concluding sentence, okay? So to, to write a good paragraph, really, and to get full credit on an assignment, you have to include all four parts. And it's, uh, it's sometimes tricky to do. So it's a good idea to just check yourself with each assignment that you do and make sure that you've included all four parts. Okay, so let's kind of break it down. We're gonna go first over the top bun. Um, there's a couple rules that I think go pretty well with uh, the idea of a topic sentence. So first of all, and this is something that my English teacher in high school actually taught me, whenever you're writing a topic sentence, you need to assume that the reader, or in your case, the teacher, that's the one that's gonna be reading your assignment, Assume that the reader has no idea beforehand what your paragraph is about. They don't know what question you were asked. They don't know what the topic is that you were asked to write about. So you need to pretend like that person has no clue what you're writing about. So you have to be the one to give them the context, give them the subject in your topic sentence. So there is a lot of ways to do that, but one of the easiest ways is really just to repeat exactly what you were asked to write about in your sentence and then go ahead and answer it. So I put an example here. I don't know if you recognize this guy right here. He is my husband's all-time favorite basketball player, which I think he's pretty cool too. But um, if an assignment asks you, who do you think is the greatest NBA player of all time? Please write a paragraph about it, okay? You would go ahead and say, okay, the greatest NBA player of all time. So I'm repeating almost exactly what the question answered, asked me. I'm not just gonna say, it's Michael Jordan because a person who's reading that, if my first sentence says it's Michael Jordan, the person that's reading that has no idea what I'm talking about. Because remember, I'm assuming that they have no clue what the question was. So I have to explain it in my first sentence. So I would say the greatest NBA player of all time is Michael Jordan, okay? So that's a very clear, detailed topic sentence that gets us started where the audience knows exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, so that's our topic sentence. Now let's get to our meat. These are our concrete details or our evidence, okay? So your meat is the good, solid information or the facts that you have to support your topic sentence. So these are, these are key. This is one of the most important parts of your paragraph because it is how you get backing or get, you know, 
obviously it's in the, in the name, how you get evidence to prove that your topic or your, your claim is correct. So you can paraphrase, you can put things into your own words, um, or you can use quotation marks if you're gonna use a direct quote, but be very careful not to plagiarize. And I know that this is kind of a tricky balance to find. Um, plagiarism is when you copy any sentence directly and write it down as if it were, were your own, where you don't use quotations, you don't give a citation for your source, you just write it as if it was your own writing. So be very careful not to do that. Um, you can use quotations to use a direct quote, but then you have to say where, you're, where you got that quote from, or you can paraphrase. And, but again, this brings us to our third point right here. You always, with your details and evidence, you always have to give a source or a citation. Now I'm gonna talk about this really quick because um, this is something that you'll have to do in a lot of your classes, both history and English classes as well. Um, and it's, it sounds harder than it is. I think a lot of people get intimidated by the idea of always, always having to write a source or a citation, but it, it's actually pretty simple in this class. Um, you're basically just answering the question, where did you learn that fact? Where did you find that information? In some cases, it might be just from the class lesson itself. In some cases, it might be from another website. So there's a couple options. Um, you can do in-text citations, or you can do a works cited page. So for your in-text citation, basically right after you put a fact, you can just in parentheses put the website that you used, or you can even in parentheses say class notes or lesson you know, 3.6.2 or whatever page it was that you got the information from on, in the class. So you can choose to do that in parentheses uh, right after your, your detail, or you can choose to do a works cited page or section um, that can, and that's just a list of websites that you used or a list of, um, you know, lessons maybe from the class that you got your information from. So uh, basically just title it works cited and then you can put that, that website there. So here's an example again. So this is my concrete fact about why I think Michael Jordan is the greatest NBA player of all time. I said, Michael Jordan worked hard to overcome failure as a child and went on to win six national championships and become a five-time winner of the MVP award. Okay. These are all facts about him. This is all concrete information that can't really be argued, right? So, and then right after I finished that, in parentheses, I went ahead and put the source of where I got that information. So um, if I wanted to, I could wait and put that website at the very end of my paragraph. And you can see, I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Okay, so that's our concrete details or evidence. Main ideas is that it's your, your facts or your information that you're gonna use to support your topic sentence. Make sure that you don't plagiarize and always, always, always give a source or a citation, either in parentheses in the middle of your paragraph or in a list at the very end after your paragraph is finished. All right, number three. So this is your third section. This is your commentary or your explanation. Okay, so this, this is your toppings, the other stuff that goes along with your meat. You need the meat for it to really be a burger, but the toppings are what makes the burger really taste good with the meat, right? So that's what we got here. Your, your commentary or your explanation is explaining why your evidence matters. Why does that evidence prove your point in your topic sentence? So this really should be at least a couple sentences long because you're trying to give an explanation for why that information matters. And you should, it, it would be hard to do that in just one sentence. So as a general rule, you should have at least two or three sentences of explanation. So, and you're, remember, you're explaining the concrete details that you gave. So if we go back a little bit, our concrete detail was that he overcame failure as a child. He went on to win six national championships and become a five-time winner of the MVP award. Okay, why does that matter? What does that even mean? That's when we go to our explanation. So here's the example with, this, with our topic that we've been moving forward with. This is how I explain why this matters. His ability to keep on trying and working despite feeling rejected early on shows persistence, strength, and determination. Okay, so this is something that I inferred or that I... I gather from the information that was in my evidence. His character was built in ways that other players never were. The recognition he received through awards and cha championship titles show what a remarkable player he really was, and he continued to play with heart and dignity his entire career. Okay, now, the, oh, let's go back a little bit. So this takes those, those three details I had that he overcame failure as a child, he won titles, he won championships, and it explains why I think that matters and why I think that that proves that he was the greatest NBA player of all time. So it's not really necessarily giving new information. It's just explaining why the information that you already gave is significant. Okay, so that's, that's the big thing. Why is it significant? Why does it matter? 
Okay, now we are gonna go ahead to our final piece, which is our concluding sentence or our bottom bun, okay? So your concluding sentence really is just restating the same point that you made in your topic sentence, but in different words, because you don't wanna write the exact same sentence all over again but you're still making the same point that you made in the first sentence, okay? And think of it this way, like on a hamburger, both the top bun and the bottom bun are both made of bread, right? Your topic sentence and your concluding sentence are gonna be made of the same thing, you're just putting different words to it, putting it, like wording it a different way. So uh, for a lot of students, this is the easiest part to leave off, and sadly, it is really what makes your paragraph really strong. Make it, letting it have a strong finish is really important to having a strong paragraph. So here's an example. Like remember, our topic sentence was the greatest NBA player of all time is Michael Jordan. So that's the same idea that we're gonna repeat in our concluding sentence, but we chose to do it with different words. While there have been many good notable players in the history of the NBA, there are none that have shown the same level of hard work and natural talent as Michael Jordan. I'm essentially still saying that I think Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time, but I'm saying it in a different way, right? I'm trying to give it a clean finish. So. Um, that's our concluding sentence. So basically you just want to wrap up your idea. Like your topic sentence says what you're going to talk about. Your evidence in your commentary talks about it. And then your concluding sentence reviews what you talked about. Okay. So you're kind of meant, like talking about the same thing three different times. Okay. So if we put it all together into paragraph form, that means that I've had a lot of students submit paragraphs that are, it, they have all of the required pieces, but they split them up line by line. And that is not paragraph form. That, that's good for you to do while you're working on your paragraph to make sure that you have all the required pieces. In fact, that's a great idea. Um, but make sure that when you go to actually submit your paragraph, it's not each, each section on a different line. It's all together in one solid paragraph. So here we put all of those same pieces and I won't, well, maybe I can go ahead and read this to you really quick, but this is our whole paragraph all together. So if we were to read it all together and let's see if it flows together. The greatest NBA player of all time is Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan worked hard to overcome failure as a child and went on to win six national championships and become a five-time winner of the MVP award. There's our concrete detail. His ability to keep on trying and working despite feeling rejected early on shows persistent strength and determination. His character was built in ways that other players never were. The recognition he received through awards and championship titles show what a remarkable player he really was, and he continued to play with heart and dignity his entire career. While there have been many good notable players in the history of the NBA, there are none that have shown the same level of hard work and natural talent as Michael Jordan. Okay, so it's a good idea to read over it. After you know that you have all the pieces, read over it all together and make sure that it flows, that it makes sense together, that each piece leads into the next piece really smoothly. And then you can see at the very bottom, with this one, I chose to do a works cited section. So just at the very bottom of the paragraph, I said works cited, and I put the website that I used to get that concrete detail information. Um, again, if you wanted to do an in-text citation, you absolutely could. It would just mean right here, after MVP award, you would do a parentheses, put the website right there, close parentheses, okay? And that would be your in-text citation. You can do either way. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Um, Let's see, before we move on to that, does anybody have any questions? If you do, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask out loud, or you can just send me a chat message, either a private one or a chat message to the whole group through the, the screen share. So I'll wait just a minute to see if anybody's got any questions. Okay, looks like we're pretty good. So everyone good if we move forward? Okay, if you do have any questions, again, they don't necessarily have to even be about this topic. If you have questions about the class in general, the website, you know, how to access certain assignments, how many classes you can have at a time, you know, anything like that, you are welcome to ask any of those. So for right now, we're gonna move forward and take this same skill that we were just developing and put it into practice with an actual assignment from World Civilization Semester One. Um, if you're in this course, World Civ Semester One, it would be a great idea for you to sit and watch this. If you're not in this course, you're welcome to leave if you want to, but if you do wanna see this same idea put into practice in a very you know, realistic way, 
then it would be a good idea to stick around even if this isn't your particular course. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and look at this activity 4.6.2. It's called the Scientific Age of, Age of Exploration Discussion. So this particular assignment um, gives you a lot of details in what you're supposed to do. And I want you to pay attention to this point right here. The assignment instructions often lay out exactly how the paragraph should be formatted. Now, they might not all do that, but a lot of them do. So if you really want to know how to do well on the assignment, just read the assignment instructions, and it's usually there in a couple different places. And I'll show you another one in a second. Um, if you read through all the instructions and pay attention to the details of what it's asking you to do, then you can really come out of any of these paragraphs with an A. Okay, so let's take a look at this particular uh, assignment and see what it's asking you to do. Task, I mean, that means your job. Write two paragraphs that answer the following prompt. How does the scientific revolution lead to the age of exploration? You will identify two ways, I ideas, or thinking from the scientific revolution that led to the age of exploration. Each idea will be the focus of one paragraph, resulting in two fully developed paragraphs. In each of these paragraphs, you will follow the following format. Okay, so this, we're stepping it up a notch. Before we were just writing one paragraph together, but now you've got two. But the, the honest truth is, it's not any harder because you're just doing the exact same thing twice in a row about two different topics, okay? So the nice thing about this particular assignment is that they basically write your topic sentence for you. You just have to fill in the blank for the topic sentence. So they give you an example of exactly what to do. You would start it with one major idea from the scientific revolution that led to the age of exploration is blank, okay? Um, in order to know what it is that we're going to be talking about, what we're going to put into that blank in our topic sentence, we need to find out where this information is, is in the class. So if you are in this class, or really in any class you're, you're writing a paragraph for, look at what the topic is, go back through your lessons in that same unit, and find the information that you need first before you start writing your paragraph, because you really got, have to have the information that you want to write about first, okay? So... <clears throat> oh, we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so for this particular lesson, I, uh, that was lesson 4.6.2 is the activity. So I looked through the rest of unit four to find where the information was specifically about the ideas from the scientific revolution, okay? And I found it here in lesson 4.2. So in this lesson, there's a video right here that goes over all of these things that were developed during the scientific revolution, including like navigational tools like the astrolabe and the compass, um, better map making, um, and of course, new shipbuilding technology, okay? So there gives you three, even in this, this introduction sentence right here that goes into the video, it gives you three options to choose, choose from, and you only need two. So you can choose which of those three you wanna use, right? Um, so if, if this is you in this class, I would go back and re-watch this video. Um, it's only about nine minutes long, and it gives you all the information that you need to write your paragraph, okay? Um, now, I'm going to go back to this slide right before really quick, because one thing that can help you do really well on an assignment is to look at the rubric. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that word, a rubric is basically just a scoring guide. And what a scoring guide means is that you are told exactly how to get an A on the assignment. And most of our assignments now, they're, they're trying to, you know, um, update a lot of our classes to include rubrics on most writing assignments. So most of them do have them now. Um, if, if some don't, if you have a writing assignment that doesn't have a rubric, let your teacher know, and that's something that we can work on getting, because these are really important to, to us as teachers to make sure that you guys know exactly what's expected of you and exactly how to get the most points possible, because we want you to succeed. We want you to do really well. Hi, welcome. Um, we are right now just going over a sample assignment of how to uh, apply our knowledge of how to write paragraphs for those that just joined. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself at any point and go ahead and ask. Um, but if you don't, just keep yourself on mute unless, unless you have something you want to say so we can drown out the background noise. Okay, um, so just a quick review for those that just joined. We're doing activity 4.6.2 to show how to write a strong paragraph for this particular assignment. We did already go through the pieces of how to write a paragraph, so if that's something that you want to see, um, I'll send out the link to this recording and you can rewatch the beginning to go through that. Okay, so our rubric, again, is a scoring guide that tells you exactly how to get an A on any assignment. So for this particular assignment, this is the rubric that I copied over. You've got three columns, A grade work, which means you've exceeded the expectations, 
C grade work, which means you did pretty good, and F grade work, which means you did not meet the expectations at all. Well, it looks like we've got a chat message. Is this extra credit? Alex, yes, we can offer extra credit for you attending here. Um, but in order to get extra credit, you do also need to participate in some way. So think of any questions that you have or feedback you want to give. Um, and we can uh, incorporate that into our lesson. Okay. So think about that. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Um, so our so we have these three columns that tells us what level of work we want to do. Now, obviously, all of us want to be in this column right here, right? We all want to get A grade work. Sometimes we run out of time or sometimes we don't dedicate all the, the resources to it that we can. So, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. But ideally, this is where we want to be is in this A section. Now, it breaks it down for you. Your topic sentence, your concrete details, your commentary, and your concluding sentence. It tells you exactly what to do for each one of those to get an A overall on this assignment. So your topic sentence, it should be clear, specific, so you need to have specific information in there, and engaging. It hooks the reader immediately. So I want you to have it so clear that I immediately know where your stance is, that I immediately know what it is, what point it is that you're trying to make. Your concrete details should strongly and directly support the topic sentence in-text citations are included. Now, with that, you are welcome to use in-text citations or you can do a work cited at the end. It, for for my, my class, you can do either way and it, it'll be fine. Um, so again, strongly support uh, the topic sentence with that detail. Your commentary, this is your explanation part. Your commentary sentences help explain and elaborate on how the idea from the scientific revolution led to the age of exploration. This is your explanation. You're just saying, this is why my details matter. This is why my information proves my point, okay? And you have to include this part. If you just put facts in your paragraph, then I don't know what those facts are supposed to mean. I don't know what, where your train of thought is about why those are significant, okay? So you've got to include this commentary. Again, you need to have at least two or three sentences because look, in the F grade column, that's fewer than two commentary sentences are offered. So if you only do one commentary sentence, you're automatically in this F grade column and we don't wanna be over there, right? We wanna stay over here. Okay, and your final piece, the concluding sentence. It effectively reaffirms all of your information and directly supports the topic sentence. So again, you're restating what you said in your topic sentence, but you are basically saying it in different words. You can even incorporate some of the points that you made throughout your paragraph in your concluding sentence. Okay, so that's your rubric. That's your scoring guide of how to do well on this assignment. So if we go ahead and head then and look at what our assignment's really asking for. Oh, this is where we got our information. Okay, we're gonna start constructing our paragraph. So in this area where I found the information, I found some information about compasses and uh, astrolabes, which are tools that, excuse me, navigational tools that helped explorers to know how to navigate their ships without necessarily needing daylight or needing to be able to see land, right? So um, it allowed them to use the sun and the stars to guide their path. So having that information, let's start constructing our paragraph because that's what we're going to write about for this first paragraph. And remember, this assignment asks for two separate paragraphs. Okay, so our topic sentence, which is our top bun. Again, we want to restate what the question said. And in this assignment, it told us exactly what to say. One major idea from the scientific revolution that led to the age of exploration is the development of new navigational tools. Okay, very simple, very clear, very direct. I know exactly what the point of this paragraph is going to be. Okay, right from the very, very first sentence. Okay, then we go and get our concrete details, right? Now, concrete detail, again, like I said, it can be paraphrased into your own words or it can be a quotation. Um, if you use a quotation, you, it's really important that you explain quota, the quotation. You know, don't, don't just put it in there with no context. So one thing that you can do is kind of like introduce it in your own sentence. So you can go ahead and say, um, the course material states, and then put your, your quotation that you got from the class. Or you could say, another significant invention was the astrolabe, which is defined as, and then I put that part in quotations. So your concrete detail, if you use a quote, it, the whole thing doesn't have to be a quote. You can kind of explain your quote while also using the quotations on the part that you're directly copying. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, 
Okay, so if we read this whole thing over again, there's two different quotations in it. You guys can see them. Anything that's not in quotations is my own words. Anything that is in quotations is somebody else's that I got from the class lesson. The course material states, the creation and use of the compass would better help navigators know their direction. Another significant invention was the astrolabe, which is defined as an instrument that would help explorers determine their ship's position and plot their path through the positioning of the sun and stars. Okay, now those are concrete details. That is information that we have. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, I wanted to make sure nobody had a question. Okay, um, those are concrete details that we have to support our topic sentence, that new navigational tools were a, made a huge difference in the age of exploration. But now I have to explain why. why. Why was the astrolabe so important? Like, why does it matter that they could use the sun and the stars to navigate their way, right? This is where we have to come to our commentary. So section number three, our toppings, the commentary or explanation of why our evidence matters. So if we say these inventions meant, so I'm interpreting why this information is important. These inventions meant explorers were no longer limited to needing land or daylight to guide them. They were able to travel farther and reach destinations more accurately than ever before. So this is two sentences, not super long, but make sure it's at least two sentences in your commentary explaining why our evidence matters. And you'll notice our evidence has a couple different sentences as well. That doesn't have to be just one sentence. It can be at least one full sentence, but it can be more. Okay, so we've got our first three pieces, right? We know exactly what we're writing about. We give concrete details about it. We explain why those details are important. And now we've got to end with, yes, you've said it, our concluding sentence. Our bottom bun, because you can't eat a cheeseburger without a bottom bun. Our concluding sentence could be something that restates our topic sentence, but in different words. These navigational tools brought about by the scientific revolution had an enormous impact on European exploration and the events and changes that happened as a result. Okay, now this is not the only correct way to write this paragraph. There are a million different things you could say, a bunch of different kinds of evidence that you could give, different ways that you can word the topic sentence if you want to, um, different ways that you can reword the concluding sentence, but this is just an example of how it can be done. So, and again, now that we've divided them up and seen that we have each specific piece, now we have to make sure that we put them all together so that they are in one solid paragraph. So, I'm gonna go ahead over here. So right here, we put the whole thing into one solid paragraph, okay? One major idea from the scientific revolution that led to the age of exploration is the development of new navigational tools and then it goes on to say all the rest of what we said, but it's not split up line by line. It's all one solid paragraph. And with this one, I did an in-text citation, okay? So right after my quotation, in parentheses right here, uh oh, go back. In parentheses right here, I wrote course lesson 4.2. That's where I got the information, and that's all I have to do is put it right there. Okay, so it, again, quoting your or citing your sources is a lot easier than you think it is. Um, okay, so this is our first paragraph for this assignment, but the assignment itself actually asks for two paragraphs, and so I'm not going to do the second one for you, but I want you to take a look at it and try it on your own. Okay, and I won't, I won't make you do it right here in the middle of the class, but you're basically doing the exact same thing we just did, but choose a new topic. Remember how I told you you had three options you were given? That lesson talked about navigational tools, but it also talked about map making and shipbuilding technology. So you can choose either of those last two to write your second paragraph about, okay? And again, if we look back at the assignment instructions, here's your first paragraph, which we already did, and here's your second paragraph. So you already know how to start it. A second major idea from the scientific revolution that led to the age of exploration is blank, is new shipbuilding technology, is the development of map making, you know, anything like that. Then you put in your details, you put in your commentary, you put in your concluding sentence, and that is it. So that's basically what we wanted to cover today, how to write a solid paragraph with all four required pieces, how to make sure that you're writing complete sentences in that paragraph, and then show you an example of how to do that on an assignment. So that being said, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, Alex, go ahead. You can type your question or you can go ahead and say it out loud by unmuting yourself.
Okay, so you said, said you're doing an outline rough draft and you're confused, is it? Oh, so you're doing, this is for another assignment, an outline rough draft. Is it for a single paragraph or is it for a whole essay with multiple paragraphs? This is an outline with a rubric like you showed. Okay, so I'd have to look at what the specific assignment asks for, but basically if you're making an outline, which is, is usually just showing, um, you know, information in an organized way, follow what the rubric says and it will tell you exactly how to get an A. So there's a couple different outlines and I'm not sure which one you're talking about. You can have an outline that shows you, um, Okay, is this it right here? There we go. Outline, hook, bridge, thesis, topic, sentence, concrete detail. Okay, yeah, so it looks like what you're actually doing is writing an outline for a whole essay. So you're basically taking the same principle that we just talked about, but you are, you are applying it to an essay, which means you're gonna have you know, multiple paragraphs in this thing. So your, your first section right here, oh, let me, sorry. Let me move this over here so you can see it. Oh, maybe it won't let you. Okay, that first section where it says your outline, hook, bridge, and thesis, that's your introductory paragraph, which is basically the same idea as a topic sentence. You're introducing what you're gonna talk about and you're stating a specific claim in your thesis, okay? The difference with this one is you can do it in a few more sentences. You don't have to keep it to just one single sentence. So, um, because each paragraph should really be, you know, at least three to five sentences. So, you are, so again, that outline hook, bridge, and thesis, or sorry, I guess more hook, bridge, and thesis, that's going to be your introductory paragraph where you say what you're going to talk about and you make a specific statement that you are going to prove in your paper, okay? Then down below, you have another section that says topic sentence, concrete detail, concrete detail, commentary, concluding sentence. That is a, a supporting paragraph that's going to support your main idea. So you're going to do exactly what we just did in this paragraph, but it's all gonna relate back to your main topic that you talked about in your introduction, okay? So for example, let's say um, your, your whole essay is supposed to be about, I'll use the example that we did in this course because I know you weren't, you weren't following earlier. We wrote a sample paragraph about who we think is the greatest NBA player of all time. Let me put it into one paragraph. So let's say that that's what you were writing this whole essay about, okay? So in your opening paragraph, you would talk about, you know, introduce maybe the NBA, maybe what some of the, um, you know, most notable things are, who some of the most popular players are in the NBA, but your thesis would be your main point that you're trying to make. This is really your main topic. So in your thesis, you would say, the greatest NBA player of all time is blank. I said Michael Jordan, you might say LeBron James or Steph Curry, I don't know, whoever floats your boat. So that's your thesis. And then every paragraph you write from that point on, you are going to be proving that that is your point. So in your second paragraph, your topic sentence would be one reason why, let's say, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player. You give a detail about him, another detail about him, explain why those details matter, and then conclude that paragraph with a concluding sentence that says, you know, that repeats the, the topic sentence, like that specific uh, information that you gave about him. Then you go on to your next paragraph, and it's, you know, a new reason of why you think Michael Jordan. So the first one might have been, oh, he overcame failure as a child. That whole paragraph could be about his childhood and how he got rejected from his high school basketball team and he kept trying and working hard anyway, okay? Your second paragraph might be about the fact that he won six national championships. So give specific details about that, you know, like he was completely ridden with the flu one season and he still played his heart out. And, you know, details like that that you can really find out there would be good details to use and then explain why those details matter with your commentary, which is your third piece of each paragraph, and then add a concluding sentence at the bottom of that. And so, and then you would do that with another third body paragraph. And then in your concluding paragraph, you are basically restating your thesis and leaving off with a strong final impression, okay? So 
the idea of your entire essay is the exact same idea as how we break down writing a strong paragraph. It's just spreading it out a little bit more. You're kind of stretching it into, instead of one sentence for the topic, you have a whole paragraph for your main topic. And then your you know, evidence and details and commentary, you're gonna go into those body paragraphs and then you're gonna have a strong conclusion at the end. I know that that was a lot of talking, but does that make sense? Okay, good. That made sense. Beautiful. If you have any other questions about this, really feel free to reach out to me and I would love to walk through this particular assignment with you, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. I'd be happy to do so. So just let me know. Um, okay, does anybody else have any other questions? Okay, well, if not, we'll go ahead and end then. If you do think of questions that you had, oh, we had one just pop up. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Alex. And uh, Donna, can you send me a private message also with your first and last name um, so I can go ahead and, and make sure that you get credit for coming to the live session as well? Um, if you have any other questions that you can think of, feel free to message me on the website or email me. Um, get a hold of me any way you can, and I'd be happy to help. Uh, I will send out, thank you, perfect. I will send out the link to this session um, to everybody in these World Civilizations classes. And so you can go ahead and review, rewatch re it and review the information if you missed the beginning about how to make sure you're writing in complete sentences and then also the breakdown of a paragraph and how we compared it to a Big Mac. So how making a good paragraph is a lot like making a Big Mac. So anyway, if you have any other questions, just let me know. But other than that, I think you guys are good. Thank you so much for coming. Loved having you here. And we will talk to you next time. Thanks guys for coming.